good morning everyone requesting everyone to please settle down we are about to begin the program kindly keep your mobiles on flight mode and please avoid any kind of movement in the hall during the event On behalf of Professor S. Ganesh, Director IIT Kanpur, and the entire institute community, I, Shweta Kumar, your host for this morning, would like to extend a very warm welcome to all of you present here today. At the 30th reunion of the class of 1994. This is a very momentous occasion, as I'm pleased to inform you that we recently celebrated 64 glorious years of the Institute's foundation. I would now like to request Professor S. Ganesh, Director IT Kanpur, to kindly come forward and be seated on the dais. Requesting Mr. Ashish Goyal, batch representative, to kindly take his seat on the stage. <laughs> Now I'd like to request Ms. Divya Singh to kindly join us on the dance. <laughs> I now humbly request all our guests present on stage to please come forward for the ceremonial lighting of lamp, which symbolizes knowledge and wisdom. Om Shubham Karoti Kalyanam Arogyam Dhan Sampada Shatru Buddhi Vinashaya Deep Jyotir Namostute At the commencement of any auspicious occasion, Jyot has been observed. The lighting of symbol lamp symbolizes abundance, prosperity, and knowledge dispelling darkness and ignorance. Thank you, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, reunion is not about counting the number of years. Rather, it's about relieving and cherishing memories and time to be grateful for the beautiful journey you had as a student of IIT Kanpur. Despite the years that have passed, I'm sure all of you remained young at heart. So why don't we begin today with our, by relieving our old days and becoming rowdy students once again? Shall we? So let's make this 30th re reunion memorable. Shall we? I request everyone to clap with me thrice and shout 30 as loud as you can. You did more than three. Let's try it once again. And this bat saw Sushmita Sain and Ashwarya Rai winning Miss Universe and Miss World. So that... So you have to do... With the Josh and with IT's tempo this time, okay? Thank you. On a personal note, I feel privileged and honored to be hosting this session as I belong to 94 family and I'm a proud spouse of 94 Allen. Let me take you to a short trip down the memory lane. 34 years ago, 300 young boys and 15 girls from across India decided to embark on a challenging journey away from the comforts of their home all the way to a city called Kanpur, now named Kanpur, to be a part of this prestigious institute called IIT Kanpur. It was an era of dancing Queen Madhuri Dixit, 
Kohli number one, Govinda, and Khans, who just entered the industry and started giving blockbuster hits like Bazigar, Dil Hai Ki Manta Nahi, Andaz Apna Apna. Yes. The famous song that demanded maximum number of repeats was. <laughs> Chai athani ki thi, navy cuts das rupay ki, old monks arsi ki, tuition fees teen so ki, aur mahine ka mess bill paan so ka. Makhan Singh ka daba and Red Rose on campus were two go places. Empty ki chai samosa, adarsh bakery ka cream roll, a dood jalebi was always special and famous jargons of the adda point were bulla, tulla, maggu, telu, dasu. Topa ya chapa? Topa bole to? Deep liya. Chapa bole to? Chap diya. Tilak dhari tiwari paan ka chalu khata almost sab ka tha. और सुंदरलाल पुतनलाल का पता ऑलमोस्ट सबको रहता था सुंदरलाल पुतनलाल बोले तो धोबीज हु वुड प्रोवाइड ओवरनाइट सर्विस एम एंड एम व फेमस पर्सनालिटीज ऑफ द बैच बोथ ऑफ नेम बोथ ऑफ देम नोन फॉर वेरीड रीजंस पहला एम बोले तो मामू चाय दूसरा एम बोले तो प्रोफेसर एम एम ओवरऑल Movies in L7 on Saturday and Sunday nights were major attraction. The more, most common phase to use during the movie time was repeat and focus. <laughs> TV serials like Jungle Book, Mahabharat on Sundays at 10 a.m. and Chitrahar at 8 p.m. would keep TV room occupied. Cricket match would infuse the atmosphere with energy, but Sachin's wicked term would bring hours of mourning. However, the 90s iconic Cadbury's ad where batsman hits the ball out of the park and a young woman runs to the field dancing with joy would once again bring smile to everyone's face. Calling near and dear ones asked for long queue at the faculty building as the landlines were the only means of communication. Or agar patients kho diya, to shuru aat hoti thi treasure hunt ki. Treasure hunt kis ka? STD boots ka. Remember that ghuma ghuma kar, ghuma ghuma kar phone karna? A phone agar lock ho jai, to sir hi ghum jana. The brawl between Hall 2 and Hall 3 had always been famous for various reasons. Battle of supremacy would range from... <laughs> Battle of supremacy would range right from competing during the cultural festival to sports to stealing of fuses or mass shouting from roof rooftop during blackouts to gali competition to aligning with girls hostel for their diverse reasons. It only reminds me of a famous quote by Atal Bihari Bajpai ji. Kaurav kaun? Kaun pandav? Tedha sawal hai. Dono or fella? Shakuni ka koot? Jaal hai. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this was an honored batch to see Dr. J.J. Irani, Zakir Hussain, Jagjit Singh, Usha Uttup, Sharon Prabhakar, Shamak Dawar to visit the campus during this day. A studious patch to remember the electrifying lectures of Professor Kalyan Banerjee, Professor, <laughs> Professor Vijay Gupta, Professor Shekhar, Professor Calvin, Professor Malik, Professor Usha Kumar, Professor Vijay Kumar, and Professor O.M.M. Oberoi, who would always, who would lovingly be called steam engine. And to top it all, Professor Ganga Dharai lecture of TA101, where he completed a perfect circle by hand without lifting pen, and everyone applauded. <laughs> An adventurous batch who went to Khujraho, Nainital, as well as Goa for industrial tour, 
Goa? Industrial too? As well as, as well as Jim Corbett National Park with an intent to see lions and tigers, but came back watching two tears. <laughs> and last but not least, a blessed patch. Because teen so ladko me, do hi ladke kabil nikle, as two girls chose their life partner here. <laughs> I can't personally share all your recollections of IIT Kanpur, but we talked with few of your classmates to try to get a closer look at the class of 1994, whose member have such nicknames. I request who are present here to kindly acknowledge by raising their hand. Honda. Honda. <laughs> Gurudev. <laughs> Panwari. <laughs> Uncle. <laughs> Tim Tim. <laughs> Hawaman. Banarasi. Furki. LNG. This is all I have from the treasure of memories of class of 1994. I hope I got my facts right. On this beautiful day, let's all remember to laugh, share fond memories, and make new memories that we can talk about at our next reunion. We are so pleased that we gathered here today in person something we cannot take for granted anymore. Before I finish, uh, we, uh, our better, your better halves have identified one more nickname, Salim. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Now, without taking any more of your precious time, I would like to invite Professor S. Ganesh, Director, uh, Director IT Kanpur, to kindly address the gathering. Awesome. Yeah, very uh, good morning to all of you and a very warm welcome to the campus. Um, I'm sure, uh, you know, all of you really cherish your memory and I know one amongst you is lucky to be here on campus as a faculty, but, but you, know, uh, you know, his batchmates joining him also makes a memorable, you know, occasion. So I'm Ganesh, uh, just to give a brief introduction, I have been a faculty in the Department of Biological Sciences and Bioengineering since 2001 and uh, I've been the Deputy Director and I have the additional responsibility of director until a regular director is appointed. Uh, uh, I'm sure the office of DORA and uh, IITK DF is taking good care of you, and I really hope that you are having a wonderful time, and also getting time to visit some of the centers and facilities which have come up in the last uh, you know, a decade or so, uh, which sort of talks about what kind of changes that took place in the Institute and what are our ambition as we march into the, you know, uh, the future. So what I thought that we would share some of the highlights of the Institute in terms of its academic program, uh, research and other outreach activities and what is that we are planning and what challenges we see and how possibly it could help us in, in achieving some of our targets uh, in, in many different ways. Uh, uh, I'm sure this is something that is a classic that IIT Kanpur is known for its computing powers and still we continue with the same. Uh, we do have a petaflop supercomputer on campus uh, that continues the legacy of having, you know, computer science and, and facilities. That is something which we are very, very proud of in this institute. The other thing that we extremely we are proud of is that the campus remains green and is getting much more. If you really look at around the campus, you would have seen that a lot more trees have come in, like the way new buildings have come in. So though we are 
constructing new buildings for our expansion of academic and research program, what you would also appreciate is that the green cover has increased over the years. And that is something, is a very, very active effort from the Institute to keep it, uh, you know, the campus green. And the campus is about 1,055 acres. And our current faculty strength is 579. Uh, I'm sure, uh, I don't know what, what, what it was, probably about 100 plus when you were here. 250. Yeah, 250. Uh, 250. Yeah, it's about 240 or so in 2000, yeah. Anyway, so UG students, about 5,000. Our batch is about 1,400 now. And we have uh, PG students, about 4,700 now. It is somewhat outdated. So our strength is about close to 10,000. So we have about uh, 170 to 200 postdoctoral fellows on campus. And, and obviously, we are too proud of the alumni base, which is about 43,000 as on today. So we have, uh, you know, obviously IIT Kanpur has a strength of engineering and science and humanities, but we have added multiple new departments. Uh, these are the list of the departments that are shown in the red color font are the ones that have been uh, sort of introduced in the last few years. One is sustainable energy engineering and design, which was a program. Now it has become a full-fledged department, but other than that, uh, you would see that you know, biological sciences and bioengineering has been introduced, uh, you know, over two decades back. And in science, you have cognitive science, again, a full-fledged department, and we have a department called space, the space, planetary, and astronomical sciences and engineering. And, uh, you know, economic science used to be one of the streams of humanities. Now it has become a full-fledged department, which again offers an undergraduate program. And then in the interdisciplinary program, we have three centers that continue to exist. <clears throat> so the cognitive science, again, is the first in the country, uh, a full-fledged uh, department, which offers uh, MS, PhD, MTech, and of course, uh, minors in, 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 in the, you know, for the bachelor's degree. Uh, one of the unique uh, initiatives that we have started in the last two or three years is the e-master's program. These are fully online uh, programs that are mainly for the working professionals to upskill uh, uh, you know, their uh, proficiency in whichever uh, stream that we have chosen is based on the industry requirement. Uh, you can see that right from cyber security to renewable energy and e-mobility, you have a large number of programs that are very you know, well uh, received. Uh, so we currently we have about uh, 500 to 600 students you know, enrolled in this program. Even our first batch of students graduated in the convocation held uh, early this year. <clears throat> Again, uh, a unique feature of IIT Kanpur, uh, we have the most flexible academic program. Uh, so you know, uh, if you really compare all IITs, the kind of flexibility that we have for the students, especially those who enter the undergraduate program is really something that we are very proud of. We do have double major, dual degree. Again, the students don't enter for any one of the program. They come and join for a four-year under, undergraduate program, but they can go on to do a double major in any other discipline, or they can do a, a dual degree in their own department or in any other department. So that's the flexibility that you offer, and we have a large basket of minor degrees. Again, that is something extremely popular among the students. Uh, so that is something that we are extremely proud of. And uh, you know, we have done a recent uh, review of our curriculum. Uh, a number of new initiatives have been launched, which includes, for example, uh, what is called as uh, interdepartmental degree, honors degree. And then we have what is called a scheme program where you have social science, communication, humanities, economics. It's a basket of courses. If they want to do that, they can migrate to that. And then you have this uh, new initiative wherein we give credits for entrepreneurial activities. If a student you know, get into during summer to be associated with a startup or industry that can be converted into credit. And we also have now an exit degree program for students who who are uh, either you know performance is not great or for some reason they want to you know exit from the four year undergraduate program if they have earned certain credits then they can get uh, a, 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 a bs degree uh, 
So, uh, and of course, we also given, opened up a small credit uh, that could be earned through MOOCs that are available, uh, which, are, which have the proctored exam and so on. Some of them are offered by IIT and IIC together. So that really offers a lot more flexibility for the students because if there are certain courses that are not available here, they can get uh, it creditors elsewhere and then they can transfer their credit. So faculty strength, as you have seen, uh, has grown uh, over the years. Uh, that is also because of, you know, you have a new departments, new programs have been initiated and also the old departments have recruited a lot more new faculty uh, because there are new areas that really the department is uh, you know, wishes to invest in. And that's one of the reasons we have now close to 580 uh, faculty. Uh, I mean, if you can really see in the last five years, we have offered some 300 offers of which about 205 faculty members have joined. Obviously, some of, uh, some of them chose other places or they did not you know, return back to the country and so on. So that's, uh, that's the focus. But of course, we are really looking for quality faculty that has been the main criteria. So it's not that we are really rushing to hire anyone and everyone. The faculty have done exceedingly well and you know, some of those uh, that have been recollected, uh, people remember the faculty forever for their teaching and research. And uh, you know, they have been recognized by various uh, awards. Some are Padmasri and of course the Infosys Prize is another you know, uh, you know, recognition within the country that recognize outstanding contribution by the faculty, not necessarily only from the country, but even elsewhere abroad. And we are very, very happy for this year, 2023, two of the faculty colleagues from the Institute, uh, Professor Satran Tripathi and Professor Arun Shukna have been chosen. Um, in, in next month, they will have the award ceremony. That is indeed a great recognition for the research uh, contribution that they have made. And of course, there are fellowships uh, like the the, the World Academy of Science Fellowship, again, uh, an important recognition, Professor Avinash Agarwal has been inducted as a fellow this year. And then, of course, we have these foreign associates of U.S. National Academy of Sciences, again, uh, in a recognition, uh, Professor Manindra Agarwal is inducted as a fellow. And then we have these um, awards that are really outstanding, uh, recognize the outstanding contribution, the Gordel Prize, Protestant Prize, Twas Prize, Scopus, Humboldt, and we have a large number of faculty, again, who are recipients of these awards, really talk about how good uh, the output has been. And so is the Shanti Swarup Bhatnagar Prize. Uh, you know, we have covered science, engineering, and also medical science. You know, that is also, uh, you know, we have pretty much covered every discipline. We have an awardee in this category. That's, uh, we believe, is an incredible achievement. <laughs> So just to give a little overview on the research and development, uh, uh, or at least the ecosystem that we have for R&D, some of those uh, units probably have already visited, the Technopark or SIC uh, or the Startup Incubation Innovation Center. So we have the academic departments, and of course we have uh, interdisciplinary programs. So what we also have is the thematic centers for you know, the R&D centers. Uh, they do not hire any faculty or offer any program, but they bring in you know, the diverse expertise, people from different disciplines join together, work on large mission mode projects. We have Center for Nanoscience, National Center for Flexible Electronics, Cyber Security Center, Seaganga, and so on, which you know, really done remarkable uh, you know, work. I will touch upon some of them. And then of course that helps the, you know, the, the, the central facilities help that. But what we have added in the last uh, one decade or so is a, a fantastic incubation system, which we call as FIRST, uh, that is Foundation for Innovation, Research in Science and Technology, which is a Section 8 company, fully owned by ID Concour, which really promotes the uh, incubation activity. Uh, uh, so that is something that we are very uh, proud of, that we, I'll talk about that a little later. And we have this uh, techno park, which is coming up in a big way, which houses uh, the R&D labs of the industry, which, which you know, really would like to uh, 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 take advantage of the expertise available within the campus. So that's where this ecosystem that really allows the 
incubation activity is something that is well recognized. Uh, so we are number one in the innovation category in the country, while the overall rank uh, in engineering is number four. Uh, these are some of those notable uh, scientific innovations that are licensed uh, or adopted by the government. Uh, for example, the National Blockchain for e-governance, I'll talk about a little later. And then we have anti-counterfeit technology for, you know, even for simplest like medicine to anything that, that really helps. And then we have this touch sensitive watch for blind. Again, it has been commercialized. Uh, and then we have the National Air Quality Index, uh, which was developed higher at IIT Kanpur. It's being continuously monitored. And then we have this uh, Bu Pariksha soil testing device. Again, this is something that is being, you know, commercialized and it becomes an IoT device for, you know, uh, giving a quality of the soil for the agriculture or farmers. And then there are other examples like electronic fuel injection. Again, it's transferred to railways and so on. Uh, this is an example, uh, you know, this tactile smartwatch <laughs> is now given to a company called Ambrain India. They are going to market it. And then we have this IoT-based system and method for multilingual braille learning. Again, this is something that has come up uh, as part of one of the centers, r and centers. And we, there are other inventions that really are commercialized and you know, it's being marketed. Uh, what is, uh, I also would say that uh, it's, it's uh, you know, if you really look at the global average in terms of commercialization success, it's about four to six percent, but our commercialization success is about 14%. It's pretty high, and we hope that this should increase. You should have more IPRs and patents should get commercialized because that would really help not only in translating the ideas for the larger good, but also in terms of revenue for the institute. So if you really look at the startup incubation system, uh, again, I would say this is, if not the best, this is one of the best in the country. So we have uh, close to 170 companies uh, on board uh, in the incubator and as many have already graduated. Some of these uh, companies have been rated exceedingly high. For example, the Indu Air is, uh, you know, is a, a startup from uh, aerospace engineering department. One of the faculty is the major uh, player there. And we have off-grid energy labs, again, this is is something we believe would uh, become a unicorn because the huge investment from Shell in this, they come up with EV batteries, and of course the full company which, uh, which, which converts the temple waste into various products, including a vegan leather, is something that really talks about sustainability and how really you can recycle and convert you know, waste to you know, wealth. You know, that is something that again valued exceedingly high. So if you really look at it's about one crore press revenue made, and uh, you know there are 16 portfolio companies, and that's really high. Uh, these are some of the recognitions for our uh, startup companies. Uh, they are listed either in Forbes or other uh, you know uh, recognitions that really talks about how good uh, they are doing. Uh, one of the example, of course, is the ventilator. Uh, this uh, company called Nocock, which originally was a manufacturer of robotic you know, device for screening or, or, or uh, cleaning the solar panels, you know, uh, we uh, got into a bigger team during the COVID lockdown for the need of the ventilator, the invasive ventilator. In about 10 months from concept to the product, you know, we could take it to the market. And what you see on the left side is the uh, invasive ventilator that was devised. Uh, uh, this Nocock is a company that marketed it. And of course, a team of you know, uh, uh, faculty from the institute and clinicians put together really you know, made this uh, a possibility. And there is a book as to how this whole project uh, went into you know, the action that is also a bestseller. In fact, now this particular ventilator company is one of the top three in the country in terms of the number of product or uh, number of uh, products that are being sold and they are exporting as well. <clears throat> So these are some of the centers, uh, which are R&D centers. For example, the Center for Nanoscience is a, is a center that looks at nanoscience and nanotechnology as the focus area. And again, there are companies that have come in. So what you see as an eSpin is a company that you know, spun out of this center. And this also is a company that 
really made the mask during uh, the, the COVID time. You know, the Swasa mask like that is quite popular had come from this. And in fact, we have set up a manufacturing plant on campus to really, you know, to make sure that we are able to produce as many masks when this was needed. Uh, there are other companies, of course, from there. And then we have this National Center for Flexible Electronics. is one of the facilities that really can print electronic circuits on any surface, including cloth, paper, and so on. And, and uh, you know, again, there are a lot of inventions there. The, the, even the watch has come from here. And then uh, there is a technology that is transferred to another company. This is for wearable diagnostic devices, uh, having embedded sensors and so on. So this, again, a facility that one could uh, consider visiting. And we have the Center for Cybersecurity. Again, it's uh, one of its kind in the country. Uh, it provides tools for protection of all critical infrastructures of the country. In fact, the government is actively uh, working with us. We help them in many of the cyber security, cyber defense, and uh, blockchain applications in the country. So a new center that was uh, inaugurated earlier <clears throat> Last month was the Center for Engineering and Medicine. This center was funded partly by a foundation, Mehta Family Foundation, based out of US. And this looks at you know, the application of engineering for medical applications. So this is a center that's part of the biological sciences and bioengineering and other faculty who are associated with this. Uh, we do have a 5G test pad. It's a large facility. It's part of a large collaborative project between IIT Kanpur and IIT Madras. In fact, uh, uh, the technologies that are developed here is being used in the 5G uh, you know, domain. And in fact, uh, that has been licensed to one of the companies, what you call a Stages Network, a Tata group. Uh, you know, we have signed last month an MOU to license this particular technology, and that would become one of the backbone service providers in the future. Yeah, so there are, uh, we could see that even the prime minister has tweeted about uh, the outcomes or the technology that came out of this institute and how they could help the government and in terms of startups and so on. Uh, we have set up a center. This is uh, a center that uses AI and AI, uh, you know, machine learning approach uh, to you know, get solutions for the problem that otherwise is difficult to handle. So we call it a center for developing intelligent system. Uh, you know, uh, you know, a large number of projects are being handled by this center. This is part of the computer science engineering and department. And likewise, we have a center for excellence in unmanned aerial vehicles, part of the aerospace engineering. So this also, we have a tie up with the government of UP. They have funded a huge, uh, you know, facility here. And we are also offering an MTech program uh, on unmanned aerial system. Uh, with uh, you know uh, sponsorship from the Ministry of Electronics and IT, so this is going to be a huge market. Uh, therefore, this program we have started. Uh, this is just to give an idea as to how uh, you know the the faculty, a group of faculty, who are experts in the AI area, is able to uh, develop a platform which we call as. Centralized Public Grievance Redress and Monitoring System, CPGRAMS. This is an A engine, and this was developed at IIT Kanpur. Uh, it's, you know, it, it, it's sort of, uh, uh, a, you know, an application which is robust. It can get the grievance in any language, Indian language, and it doesn't use the query, but context-dependent sorting and, you know, sends out to the relevant, you know, sections and departments for uh, follow-up. So that is something that was well appreciated by the government, and uh, we have received what is called as National Award for E-Governance Award for this particular initiative, and it is extremely uh, successful and being appreciated. So we have uh, other centers. One is the DORD Industry Academy as Center of Excellence. We just we began with a huge funding. Uh, a large number of projects are in pipeline, and there are uh, five uh, verticals, but main focus is on materials. Uh, this includes printing of flexible electronics, advanced nanomaterials, and so on that are listed here. So this is something that is coming up. We have allotted a dedicated space for that. This is mainly to look at uh, defense applications. Uh, the other example is I spoke about the techno park or the research park where we wish to have the companies set up their R&D. And we have signed uh, 
one agreement with a lab called Lawrence Lab. This is one of the large pharmaceutical company which has multiple you know, uh, R&D labs abroad. So they are setting up a huge facility here. It's a huge investment on campus, close to about 100 crores they're investing to create what is called as a GMP facility, good manufacturing practice. So the idea is to create a platform for gene delivery applications. So this is again a patented or IPR that is from IIT Kanpur, which is licensed to them. So it provides a vehicle for delivering a good copy of the gene for those who have a defective copy. So it's a therapeutic attempt. So that's something which has come out of the Institute. They are setting up a huge facility on campus. And uh, we have also signed up another agreement with the uh, Cancer Center in Lucknow, which is a UP government uh, uh, cancer center. And then you have with one of the company called Carquinos. This company is funded both by Tata's and and Reliance, and, uh, and IIT Kanpur is a partner here. This is mainly to do the diagnosis for cancer, a genomic and proteomic based diagnosis, and once the data comes, we would be looking at the data to really decipher whether there are signatures that predispose an individual or an, an outcome of the therapy and so on. So that is some huge uh, data-driven approach that we have taken, so the idea is to really do a genomic profile for all the cancer patients of this uh, state of Uttar Pradesh. So we have launched uh, the School of Sustainability with the generous support from Quartac, Mahendra Group. And that's why the school is named as Quartac School of Sustainability. This was launched on 14th of this uh, month by uh, the Minister of Education, uh, which has got multiple uh, objectives. Of course, uh, it comes with uh, science and engineering discipline, and it has environment and ecology and society and economy. These are the large, uh, you know, uh, domains that this particular school is looking at. And of course, uh, there are verticals well defined, and we have one department that is Department of Sustainable Energy Engineering already in place. We have also have a center, uh, which I will talk about now, is the uh, send the, send the, the Chandra Kanta Kesman Center for Energy Policy and Climate Solutions is part of that Quartac School of Sustainability. This center was established with uh, funding from Mr. Sudhakar Kesman, an alumnus, uh, uh, and, and of course really looks at energy technology policy, and that's the focus. And of course we have another center. Uh, this is Shivani Center for Nurture and Reintegration of Hindi and other Indian languages, and this is uh, again <laughs> sort of funded and support, being supported by Mr. Muktesh Pant uh, and his wife. Uh, and again, this center really looks at a very different aspect that is for the undergraduate students who join this you know, institute. They find challenge in English when they join here. So this center really helps them to have a soft landing. And also this center is helping to translate some of these technical you know, you know uh, books into native languages and also to promote the uh, you know literature so that's also one of the mandates in fact the reason that it has been named as shivani is because shivani is a very famous uh, you know hindi literary figure right so that's that's the reason that you know we have uh, established this center and of course there are multiple initiatives that are supported by the alums like one is dr rojit singh roji Siksha Kendra, again, I'm sure you would have some time to visit that place. This is really looking at empowerment uh, of the women in the rural areas. And we have the Jeet Bindra unit operations. Again, it's a UG lab uh, of chemical engineering. And we have J. Pulur non-invasive brain simulation laboratory uh, as part of the cognitive science department. And also a new facility in the library for you know a reading room. So that is, again, something funded by uh, late uh, Mr. J. Pulur, uh, through his wife. Yeah. So just to touch upon the international collaborations, uh, of course, the research collaborations do exist. But what we uh, talk about today is about the joint academic programs. So we have 14 joint degree programs with universities overseas, like, for example, from Taiwan, from the US, from the Australia. We have you know, universities with whom we have a joint PhD degree program, uh, again, we also have joint supervision program with some of the institutes. Uh, so this includes, for example, joint research centers, 
student internship, semester exchange, joint degree program. So these are the activities that we do. Uh, as I told you that joint PhD program is very uh, popular now. So close to about 70 students are there in this particular program uh, who would receive PhD from both the partnering universities. And that is something that really would like to promote. And our Senate also has approved now joint master's program. And we are going to launch even joint MBA program with one of the American universities. That brings in you know, more uh, internationalization. And also students also get used to uh, a different uh, uh, infrastructure and environment that would help them in, in their academics. As you have seen that the campus is growing um, in terms of its infrastructure, several new buildings have come and that are essential for two reasons. One, that the number of students have increased and of course we have a number of departments have increased and we have need for more research labs. And as we grow, we need residential areas. So the independent houses are gone now. So we are going for multi-story building. Again, you must have seen several you know, tall buildings coming up and, and, and uh, you know, you can see that the existing area uh, that we have covered is given there, and, but we are almost in the last 10 years, we have doubled the infrastructure. So that's the pace at which we, we are you know, growing uh, to meet the demand. And some of these are the buildings. You see the Diamond Jubilee Academic Complex. This is the largest <laughs> building uh, on campus, and we have engineering science building one, two, and three that have come up already commissioned. Uh, we have extended the core lab, that's called as extension of core lab, and of course, AC plan for need of the air conditioning. And the, for the faculty, we have the type three apartment. There are 112 apartments that have come in, uh, in place of five houses. So we uh, brought down five houses, type five houses, and we have the huge apartment there. We have completed the Mehta Family Center for Engineering Medicine, all of residence 14, uh, uh, you have research complex, which is coming up. In two months, we'll be inaugurating it. That would have uh, you know, several research facilities. Technopark, I mentioned, this is for housing the R&D labs of the, uh, the, the industry. And of course, faculty build, building annex is coming up, where we would move most of the administrative offices into one building. So there are other such initiatives. Some of them are adding blocks to existing hostels and so on to take care of the need of the infrastructure. And of course, to enhance the alumni relations, we have set up a new uh, entity called IIT Kanpur Development Foundation, uh, which is again a Section 8 company of IIT Kanpur because we felt like, you know, while the Dura office really being the face of such interaction, we need a far more professional uh, group to engage with the alumni and, and other outreach activities. So we have this company now, Mr. Kapil Kaul, he's the chief executive officer of the company. Uh, and then we have a dedicated staff for this, which really works with the Institute uh, to realize some of its you know, uh, dreams and really uh, serve as a bridge between the alumni and the Institute. So that as its own board, you can see here, uh, you know, the board members include some of the famous alumni and of course the ex officio director and dean resources and alumni and so on. So this is something that really helped has to you know, connect with the alumni in a much better way. And I'm sure you would have seen a difference in the way how the institute is able to connect with. And it also helped us in, in raising you know, funding for many of our projects. You can see that uh, you know, uh, five years back, our fundraising has been around 10 to 15 crores, but now we are really going around 180 or so. And, 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 and uh, you know, if you really look at the uh, the ma major uh, source of the donations, you can see that the alumni from within the country uh, are uh, abroad and non-alumni, again, contributed. And of course, the <coughs> corporate sector, the social responsibility you know, uh, schemes. And then, of course, you can see that uh, that really is helping us in the current financial year. That is the trend. So really, we would like to reach out and, and, and you know, uh, uh, raise significant amount for the expansion activities. And some of the major uh, individual donors are listed here. We are very, very thankful to them. It's not about just contributing, but uh, contributing beyond uh, and helping us in coming up with uh, defining the goals and connecting with others who could contribute in many different ways. They're extremely 
thankful to them and uh, you know their their help has been enormous in in terms of how the kind of a changes uh, in the infrastructure academic and research program we are able to put in place in the last 4 or 5 years so these are some of the activities we have really started the reunions after the covid break uh, you can see that the number of unions that we have scheduled uh, you know that's something that really uh, talks about uh, the major role played by the iitk df in terms of connecting and logistics and, and so on and and uh, you know uh, the initiatives taken by different uh, batches during the reunion also listed and i'm sure uh, there may be a separate presentation and more details about them uh, these are some of the other engagement for example the team from iit kanpur visits different places and we try to connect with the uh, alumni there for example in australia or in us we do have the alumni connect program uh, every year at least once we visit different parts of the world to connect with them and to update you know the new development that happens in the on the campus uh, this year so far so we have 40th reunion and we also started the 10th reunion for the, this is the second 2013 uh, they have come here last week and uh, that's something that we have a large number of reunions lined up you know in in uh, in in january and feb and so on so i'll talk about two major initiatives one is of course this school called gangwal school of medical sciences and technology uh, which is something that is an unique uh, a model that that we envisioned and are able to execute uh, the idea is to uh, use engineering technology for healthcare needs and what we are doing is we are setting up a hospital on campus and there's going to be a medical school academic programs uh, the the specialty clinical specialties are listed on our left left side there are about nine clinical specialties that we have already identified that's going to come as part of the edupati singhania super specialty hospital that's under construction and then we have uh, centers of excellence in you know futuristic quarantine like we have identified our strength the need and then we there are thematic areas like for example telemedicine robotics cardiovascular and pulmonary disease orthopedics non invasive medical imaging therapeutics and so on and the therapeutics that we spoke about is something that i just now mentioned has got a huge investment even from laros lab i will talk about some of these so the idea is that you would have a medical school where you will have a clinical faculty but we also would have the faculty from the other departments being part of it and each of these r and d centers would have faculty from engineering science and 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 the medical school and you take up challenging flagship projects as a team mode and then you know as a mission mode and try to uh develop a product or process or help the society so that's that's the model uh the school is coming up in the in the mm, you can see this is the plot near the shivli gate uh, as you exit if you want to go on the other side it's a huge uh, 30 acre plot it's coming up there uh, uh so you know the gangwal school is named because of the principal donor mr rakesh gangwal so we pledged a significant amount and of course we have founders mr muktesh pant dr dev joneja dr you know anil bansal and heman jalan they are founders and we are really looking at many other such contributions and one of the flagship projects that has that that the school has taken up is the hridayantra uh, what you call as artificial heart you know this is called as elward a left ventricular assist device uh, the major or the the principal advisor for this particular project is dr devi shetty from narayana hridaya in fact he is really helping us with the entire hospital project uh, so he has written about this particular device that we are developing uh, the idea is that you know if you really look at this elvad uh, this is you know this this device if if anyone is having an issue with the heart where there terminal failure this device if you are able to implant then it can really uh, help them for next 30 years or so but the issue the challenge there is that it is extremely expensive it's about 1.4 crores and and if you really add up the medical other you know hospital charges and all it is prohibitive for any of the normal family that otherwise even for young kids who had issues now they die because simply they cannot afford so the idea is to create one so we in this institute 
took up this challenging problem, what I can say is that we have a prototype now, which is which we have tested using a multiple ways, and this is going to enter into the animal trial, what is called as preclinical trial. And this is, as of now, is extremely promising, which serves whatever we are expecting it to do, and the design, the material, everything composite, everything is in-house prepared. And the idea is that you have this product in about 15 lakhs. That's the idea. So you develop a product that is as good as that one that is available, if not better, but you're able to you know, really sell it for a cost that most of us can afford. And that's the whole idea. And the reason why we are able to say that we could bring down the cost is by giving a subsidy for R&D. So you know, the reason is that the lab space is open for the researchers who really work on this. The faculty contribute their time. And we have a team of fellows uh, whose salary we are paying from various sources, including the contribution of the alumni. And they won the IPR, right, part of it. So therefore, they are committed for making it uh, you know, a successful you know, venture. Therefore, they can spin off. Therefore, we are really taking care of the R&D you know, uh, part of it. And when you really praise it, it goes to what is the cost of the material and entire supply chain and so on. So that's why you're able to bring it down. So we are confident that it would happen in about two years from now. So we have multiple uh, uh, you know, uh, models by which uh, people could contribute to this uh, very noble cost because I gave you one flagship project, but there are multiple projects. The one of them that we have signed with uh, the UP government is to make what is called a digital health stack. This is for complete you know, the uh, health records of the you know, UP government, we are going to do it and we use the AI uh, platform to analyze and help in terms of, you know, you flag it off as to what could be the issue, therefore the doctor could spend less time and attend to the patients using telemedicine and whatever. That's, that's the idea, whole uh, idea behind it. So there are various models by which people could contribute to this particular initiative. And one of the contributors for the building that is shown here is a PG doctor's residence building. There are about 90 studio apartments coming for the PG doctors. And uh, that's what's shown here is, again, funded by the REC in terms of the CSR contribution. And this is the Bhumi Pujan. Already the building construction has begun. For the academic program, so we have had multiple discussions with multiple you know, top leading universities in the world. For the academic collaboration, we have tied up with the University of Melbourne. This is one of the top 25 medical schools in the world. The idea is that, you know, can we really uh, train next generation doctors? Because in India, the medical curriculum is strictly regulated, uh, unlike the IIT system where you join any program and you can do a master's or double major or even migrate from one stream to the other. That doesn't exist. Uh, so the idea is that can we uh, how engineers who enter in our BTEC program and they go on to do a master's in like MD in medicine. Therefore, they have an entire understanding of science, engineering, and, and medicine, right? So that's a new breed of clinicians. And that's one of the focus areas with the University of Melbourne that we are trying to sort of, you know, uh, come up with. Uh, it could be a seven-year program, but that's, that's, that would produce uh, clinicians that are very, very different, you know, engineering in medicine. That's what uh, we are really looking at. Uh, yeah, so these are some of our goals, uh, 2025. So the faculty should reach about 650. We are very hopeful that we'll be able to do that. And 10,000 students, that's also uh, primarily by increasing the number of PhD students because the undergraduate is pretty much, you know, fixed across the IITs. And of course, when you increase the strength, you need to have infrastructure, both academic and, and research and so on. Therefore, and you have a residential accommodation for the students and the faculty. And of course, we have this Gangwal School of Medical Science and Technology, wherein we also cover what is called as medical science and technology on campus. And of course, beyond these new initiatives, then you have horizontal growth. Uh, you have School of Entrepreneurship. That is something that we are planning. School of Sustainability already we have launched. School of Data Sciences and so on. So these are some of those goals. And to achieve that, there are challenges, obviously. Uh, you know, you, as you know, the ministry now, uh, they have a limited grants in aid. What they give is pretty much meant for the salary 
fellowship of the students and maintenance of the campus. If really, if you are building anything new, then you have to take loan, just like we construct houses. So institute take loan, what is called the FR, Higher Education Fund Authority of India. They give loan using Canada Bank. And we have to repay the loan in a period of 10 years, 10% each year. So that, you know, our current model is that's what we have close to about 800 crore loan that we have taken. Most of the building that you see that are newly constructed or upcoming are all built through this kind of loan. And we pay, repay uh, using our revenues, the revenues that come from the student fee or coming from our R&D efforts in terms of R&D projects or our IPR, you know, when we uh, commercialize the money that we earn, that's how we do. So obviously there is a need for funding uh, that we are trying to reach out. Uh, these are some of the, uh, uh, you know, support from the alumni that can really help infrastructure. Of course, student hostel, research lab, sports facility, breakout spaces, classrooms, and you have for students in terms of scholarship, awards, travel grants, and of course, faculty, if you can give them better seed grant for them to kickstart their research activity, it's going to be more productive. And of course, some of the incentive schemes. The involvement also, there are beyond you know, resource, there are many ways the alumni could contribute. Uh, for example, you could be our visiting faculty in department uh, that has, uh, you know, uh, you know your, con your, your expertise could be of help. It could be adjunct faculty visit whenever you feel like and talk to the students, give lectures. And if you're really looking at full time, there are also professor of practice. Some of our alumni have already joined that way. And of course, you know, also you could contribute in terms of ranking. The perception is an important, uh, you know, uh, 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 significant uh, weightage in the ranking. So you could really rate your alma mater how good it is. So these are some of those ways by which you would be able to help us. Thank you very much. Yeah. So I'll be happy to take any very uh, suggestions that if you have. Yeah. So about IIT is uh, like, you know, one of the ways you gain or you understand where the rankings are or something is based on the gain uh, rank which starts or finishes the rank. So on average, what rank does computer science start at? Or not start at one, on average what rank? person goes to Kanpur. Yeah, uh, one thing is clear that you don't get here JEA or one, you know, that is, uh, it's Bombay, right? Yeah. Reason, uh, uh, that is a million dollar question, right? Uh, if you really look at, if you break it into top 500 or top 1000, you know, it's, so you don't really, uh, ID Kanpur would be among the top three if you really break it that way, but if you really make it top 100 or two, top 200, you know, there will be very few top 100. I don't know whether we, we haven't, you know, uh, uh, in the recent years, none of them joined us. It's uh, either Bombay, Delhi, that's where it is. Uh, if you like make it like top 1000, then we'll be like high to Madras, Kanpur together, or maybe we are a high of Madras, right? It is mainly, it is uh, Bombay and Delhi. They, they yeah, and we understand, I think, yeah. because of the major cities, Possible. I think. Possible, yeah. That's yeah, so. But after Bombay and, I, uh, and and Delhi, is it among the the other three? Yes. Is, are we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Competitive. That's and? right. That's right. Yeah, we are competitive. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Maybe a follow up on that. How does the placement? How do you compare placement? Placement hours is the best. If you really have to look at the percent of the students who applied for placement and the package, if you really look at, if that is the way you want to look at it, we are the, you know, we are doing best. Yeah. How have you kind of morphed and included LGBTQ rights in IIT? That's a good question. We'll think about it, yeah. <laughs> yeah so yeah, the exit program is uh, something that we have recently got it approved. Uh, so now you know that we have moved into the credit-based uh, uh, 
you know, uh, graduation mode, right? You know, in, 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 in the sense that a student could even graduate, an undergraduate students can complete the coursework and graduate in three and a half years, right? If they take overload and they can, they don't need to stay for four years. So the, the exit program is that we have set certain credits that they have to earn, and there are certain minimum courses they should have cleared, regardless what grade they have gotten. Then they'll be able to give them what is called as a BSc in science and engineering, something like that. You know, there is a honorable kind of a degree that, if at all it is useful, they can use it. Otherwise, they don't so, get anything. So, yeah, with yeah. subset of BTEC courses, they can earn a BS degree in science. Yes, that's right. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Applied science, this is called as, yeah. Excuse me. What what is the criteria of e masters? What is the duration and yeah. <coughs> So this is a, one can finish the program in one year. That is the minimum period by which they can complete. But it is something that uh, the student can plan how they would like to, you know, phase it, right? So you can be pay a minimum and you can, instead of taking the full load, you can take only one or two modules and depending on, you know, your time availability, what you can spend. So you can stretch it to two years or three years. That's fine with us. But that's how it is offered, yeah. So one year is the minimum, so the, yeah. Four quarters, that's how it is, like a, yeah. So what is the criteria you have said for the professor of practice uh, for the alumni or maybe the, the people? Yeah, criteria is like, uh, there's no requirement, mandatory requirement of a PhD. You know, there's a big relaxation in terms of if you really want to be a faculty in any IIT, that PhD is a must, but here that is not mandated. But what is uh, expected is somebody who has really played a leadership role, you know, either in, uh, you know, whichever area that is relevant to a given department. It could be R&D labs, it could be, you know, any, any area that is of relevant. For example, if you talk about economic science, you know, they would be looking at somebody who really, you know, did exceedingly well in, banks and financial sector, that could be of great help to them. Likewise, in, in, in management, their requirement could be different. So this is, is something that, that we are looking at. So we do have a probably about six or seven of them in as what you call the visiting professor of practice that allows flexibility. It is not necessary that you have to be there 30 days in a month here. So it, you, know, you can have a loose engagement. Uh, you can be committed for courses, come teach and go. Uh, and then, of course, we have one professor of practice who is full time. You know, it's just like any other faculty, right? Yeah, you have to be on campus. Yeah. <laughs> whether whether that's the reason why the top uh, J rankers don't come here, I don't know. But you know, having said that, I think it's uh, the stress is something that uh, I mean, it's not only the environment, but more of a perception and which background they come and what kind of uh, uh, environment that they have when they are into the program that also matters. And as you may know, that you know, if you really look at uh, the management, like stress management, the counselors. This is a concept that was introduced in IIT Kanpur, I'm sure most of you know. We have close to 14 student counselors now, you know, take, you know, help students to, you know, take care of the academic pressure and other pressure that they go through. So that's the way we'll be doing. But certainly, uh, IIT is still, IIT Kanpur still uh, is heavy demand on academic, <laughs> you know, requirements. Yeah, that is there, yeah, that continues, yeah. In our time, in a batch of 300, somebody, yeah. uh, in our time, if some professor gives 20 F fakka, that used to be on the extreme side. Yeah. Yesterday I was talking to some undergrad student and she told me that in mathematics, some 250 students have been given F. So in a batch of 1,200, <laughs> if 250 are failing, I, I think the stress level has gone up. How do you get out of it? Well, uh, <laughs> we have to look at it. It could be, but if, see, if really 
uh, let me put it this way like if that is if it is if it is a stress for that particular course or stressed otherwise right then then the 250 that whatever the proportion should be there for every course you know it could be a tough course i don't know we have to look at it is it possible it happens uh, yeah i mean that's but it it, it it is not like in every course that a student attended uh, he or she is unable to do because the stress you know that is probably is not the case yeah yeah no, thanks for a very nice presentation. For someone who has come back to the campus after 30 years, it's very encouraging to see so much of development infrastructure. But it, at the same time, it also hurts to see the dilapidated conditions of the hostels where we used to live 30 years yeah. ago. So is there a plan to kind of renovate and yes. also take care of those old structures or is it all about expanding and doing new things? No, no, no. So there is, see, because there are two things I can tell. Uh, uh, we can assure everyone that there's one, of course, any new building that you see, again, it would have a flavor of the old building. You know, it's not like each one is looking different. So you have a common theme. And of course, what you are saying is true that many of the hostels, the condition is not good for two reasons. It's not that we are not interested in fixing them because of the challenge that we faced in the recent past. For example, we had this COVID and it is one institute. Yeah, I can tell you that we are extremely proud in the COVID we seamlessly transferred to the online mode, you know, and every student graduated in time and we have given relaxation. If you really look at how IIT Kanpur dealt with the academics during the COVID, it's phenomenal in terms of student management, you know. We were able to close down the hostels and help the students move back and then we brought back students in batches. So what happened was that during the last four, three, four years, uh, you know, maintenance is a every year you have to do, right? So what happened? Two, th two challenges. One, the number of students have increased, okay? Number two, during the last three years, there is an asynchronous semester. The first year's coming in late, right? And then the rest of the batches started in August, but they were starting in now, you know, October or November. So there was no respite for closing down the hostel for the summer to take care of the renovation. So you know, this is a challenge, but this is the first, after three, four years, this is the first batch. We are able to synchronize the batch. So comes this summer onwards, we'll be taking up this renovation process because then you need to have the hostel vacated, you know, for doing any such kind of a major condition. So that's the reason behind that, yeah. Just one. Hi. Uh, many of us actually have left science and technology. Oh, okay, sorry, yeah. 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 Many of us have left science and technology and have been into other spheres more on the management side, etc. and a lot of work we do there. So, sort of, is, what are the ways to contribute? Because we might not really remember science and technology, but some of our entrepreneurs, some are bankers, some are diplomats, and, uh, and some are still in tech. So, what is the way that, uh, I, I don't know if the MBA school in IIT used to be there, but is it like still there? Then that is an area where one can help devise courses on. Absolutely. Let's say yeah, yeah. Uh, private equity or banking or whatever, but science and technology might, I, I feel some of us might not be able to contribute that much, right? No, I fully agree. Uh, I mean, uh, there are several ways by which we'll be able to contribute and really we do have alumni who, you know, who came back to us and contributing in a big way. Just to give one example, you spoke about uh, the management school. We do still have that management school and the MBA is a program in addition to the MTech, and they are starting even uh, a minor and an undergraduate program. And uh, Dr. Arash Sharma, you know, who I'm sure all of you know, he was, uh, a, you know, uh, IS officer, alum of IIT Kanpur. Now he's a faculty here. He comes and teaches. So we have many such, you know, people who have been secretary of the government of India who have come here and teach students in policy, in administration, and so on. So. This is one way you can really contribute because the, the, you know, the, the curriculum has expanded. We are getting into new areas. For example, if you talk about sustainability, you know, it is not just about uh, the engineering and science. It, it's more about administration. It's more about society. So there are many ways where you'll be able to contribute and we'll be extremely happy. In fact, we are trying to make what is called as a circle, a kind of a mentor circle uh, where uh, you could come once in a semester, come and, you know, talk to the students. It could be, you know, pep talk. Or if you are in a corporate sector, you could come and sort of give a pep talk to the students as to how they can 
uh, enhance their soft skills. You know, it's one of the challenges that we face, you know, for the students at IIT Kanpur, majority come from rural background. I mean, this is, this is, that's the, that's, that's the reality. And when it comes to the placement, when you really have to compete with people who probably are more articulate, not necessarily because they are pretty good, but they've developed that skill set. You know, these are the things that really we would request. Some of you, if you could spare time, you will really help in setting up that kind of a thing you can contribute. Or people who have, you know, investors, like you want to really look at, for example, or, you know, look at some other startups which you think that would become good, you can contribute to them in terms of your technical knowledge. And also if you, you may invest them. And in fact, and that is one of the reasons why we are extremely successful in, in startup ecosystem because most of our mentors are investors in the company. And they're all alumni, right? Not, that, not only bring in value in terms of their advice, they know what is the market, which is the focus area, and helps the startups to address those issues and you know, focus on that area, and they invest because they know that you know, they are going to do quite good. And that's the reason why the startups are doing well as well. So to your question, there are multiple ways. You know, we reach out, our IITK DF is our you know, connecting link, and we are you know, trying to really, uh, I would say we are trying to really engage alumni uh, you know, in many ways. Therefore, you know, it would be of great benefit to the student community and the institute at large. Yeah. So can I have a question? Yes, yeah. yeah. So first of all, thank you for the presentation. So where? Uh, uh, it was a very nice presentation oh, to, okay, see, sorry, yeah. Yeah, yeah. to see the institute growing because I left in 94 and since then there are so many things which have been added. So it is fantastic to see that. But my perspective coming from industry because I have been working in industry since I left, we have generated a lot of students who have come up with a fantastic academic qualification, including myself, I consider one of those. But then when you go to industry, you find what industry needs is not just the people who have got fantastic right. academic skills, but they also need many more things, mm. which I felt when I left the institute, we were not given enough instruments or enough ammunitions to go and experiment yourself. When I look at, when I work abroad, when you see, and you hire graduates, and then you try to see from your perspective, this guy has got probably far lesser academic understanding or qualification of technical matters, but then this person can do a fantastic job to articulate something right. better than other person. So what I'm trying to say, not only just the street smartness, but even the course structure, how much focus we give on the writing skills. Are we doing something in that space to so that we can produce the similar kind of uh, output. So I think that is the area which I would like, I'll be interested to see what the institute is doing. So thank you. I mean, I think you touched upon an extremely important point and uh, we do uh, understand that that is something that, you know, is an important element that we have to bring in in terms of training and teaching as part of the curriculum or as a core curricular activity, the students can do well. Uh, communication is one of the compulsory courses that we have introduced now. And then there is a uh, you know, it's a soft skill development. We have set up a cell, which, you know, sort of uh, helps the students to do. But, I mean, I don't think this is enough because the number of students, as you have mentioned, is pretty large, right? And everyone has a different skill sets. To bring everyone to a certain level, it really requires uh, much more investment and much more in terms of, you know, engagement. This is something that we are, we are, we are very mindful of. We are trying to put together uh, a mechanism wherein uh, there's a structured way of, you know, training them in terms of how they communicate and how they are able to express their ideas. You know, this is something that is we are we are trying to do. Yeah. The suggestion was mainly to indicate that the assessment criteria, which institute ha had in past, I don't know what is the recent thing, is quite focused around exam technicals and all those skill sets. Is there an element of- You're talking about undergraduate? Or? Undergraduate. Undergraduate, see. Can we, can we build something around is a, writing skills? No. Those kind of things. In screening, it is impossible to do, right? The simple reason is, unless it is a numerical value that sort of gives you a marks, you know, which can be a merit list, uh, the number of applicants that you handle, and if you want to finish the system, it's going to be extremely difficult, right? And subjective, if you bring in there, you know, this is practically very difficult. So all IITs are really 
gave up that as a you know it used to be there it used to have a two papers all those things it's gone now everything is objective now right it's going to be challenging you know unless you come up with some different model as of now that's difficult right so once they are in right now you have to see what is the need of individual students and how we can really because we believe that uh, a student who is admitted based on their performance in you know whatever chemistry physics maths they should be able to learn language and if you can give that kind of a platform so that's that's the idea that we are trying to do and you know promote that possibility so I think that's what somebody is trying to get to. It's not about the, the entrance into IITs. No, you spoke about both. Yeah, yeah but it's inside de development of personalities and, and giving the giving enough avenues yes. to people so that they build confidence Absolutely. to stand up and talk yeah. and express themselves. That's and that's where it was, at least in our days, it was very academic or oriented. Mm -hmm. It was very little opportunity. No, no, the, for people. the, uh, Shivani Center I spoke about is also one of such kind of initiatives. Like, you know, often, for example, I, I may come from Andhra, for example. I may not even know Hindi that fluently. I, anyway, it's not good. My English is not good. Can there be some handholding, you know, to make me comfortable here? I mean, it's not about, and likely there are people from, you know, rural background, they know probably only Hindi. They cannot really get into language, you know. How they can build their confidence and they're able to express, learn and get better. Yeah. Yeah. So something, and we can discuss uh, yes, later on yes, as well. It's yeah. not about language. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's about communication, communication, communication and, yeah, and right. linguistic skills are yes. two very different yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you can speak poor English, but you, if you can articulate and communicate it, you, you can still do the job. Yes, yes, yes. So I think that's the second part is what industry yeah. really looks so, for, because we all work in connected teams and, and being able to work individual brilliance is just not enough. Yes, yes, I agree. I mean, that's, we do have, we do have cells that, you know, that's, I told you that it's not enough for the number yeah. of students you have. In fact, for the PhDs, we have even a diagnostic test to rank them based on their, yeah. you know, the, uh, the ability in their expressions. And then yeah. you focus on those who require some attention in certain areas, you know. Uh, these are the attempts that we are taking, yeah. Right. yeah. So Professor, this is Sandeep. I, I live in a small city state, Singapore. And there are two universities, one is NUS and NTU, which are growing in ranking much more than our institutes. Uh, I mean, and, and I, when I compare the quality of students that come out from NUS and NTU versus IIT Kanpur, of course, the quality is vast, vast, uh, vastly, I think IIT Kanpur ranks on top. Whereas when global ranking comes, IIT Kanpur is nowhere what is being done actually to improve the global rankings, uh, which actually becomes a perception. And second question, which is more targeted towards, I see a very good uh, uh, initiative by Institute to go into humanities, into different kind of, and now medical, uh, medical uh, school that you are talking about. And I see one course called Management Science. Mm -hmm. May I know what Management Science is about and what it teaches? Right, this is the, you must have heard about the department called IME. IME is re-Christianed as Management Sciences. Now they're expanding uh, uh, their academic, you know, uh, profile. Yeah, that's what it is, Management Science, yeah. So regarding your question on um, ranking, you know. Uh, yes, sure, we are not in, you know, the top 100 institutes, right? But certain areas, if you look at, we will be in top 100. Uh, you know, again, you mentioned that the students, if you compare those who come out of IIT and compare with any of the, you know, Singapore universities, you see that students are pretty good here. So there is something problem, right? You understand, right? If re really ranking is based on the outcome, meaning the students, how well they are trained, uh, there is some problem. But having said that, you know, international <coughs> rankings always have the bias, like, you know, how many foreign students you have, how many international students you know, faculty you have. You know, these are, there are two elements which really gives a lot of weightage. So we, you know, score very poorly here because, you know, it's in Government of India Institute, right? And the entry to your undergraduate program is through JEE and everyone is Indian, right? So that's, that's one of the reasons if you really look at even in master's and PhD, a very small number of international students. So that we really rank very poor because of that. Again, if you really look at the number of uh, non-Indians, passport holders who are faculty here, there are only five. 
but they all look indian because they are indian origin right but again that is what we 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 show that they are not indians but then it's a very small number so you lose out that right so obviously the ranking agencies are nothing but commercial entities their main job is to rank universities based on parameters that the customers look at who are the customers parents and students who want to get into a, any any university so they look at is our university is completely international how many different countries gone in so this is one of the ranking and obviously for sure if i am a parent i am going to look at it because if it is you know completely no uh, you know everybody is from that country no one else come from outside it's going to be a challenge for anyone to get in there and do it so we do very badly there but there are other aspects for example how many uh, citations per faculty if you really look at it you know research output i mean you would be in the top 100 if you look at in those things we are coming for example iic you know much higher because they are purely research institute and the other one is students to faculty ratio right i mean if you are more than 10 for example per, per faculty to student then you score low you know we are around 13 14 like that so you have to increase the number of faculty here to increase the number of faculty you have to be also mindful of your quality of faculty so the pool is not very large right we are expanding there are more institutes coming up there are sister institutes iit is coming up so there is a competition so but these are the challenges that you have right i mean it would take time and you know some of the iits now they are going global this so if you consider them as part of this institute you know you are student who are international students might help in ranking so these are some of the ways but you know that if you really change that uh, that's a different thing but we have to look at overall how we can maintain the quality and you can improve and get better in the ranking as well so that's something that we are working on here hello ha hello sir yeah. can i ask some question because sure. i am not an itn i am a itn i am not an itn either yeah okay <laughs> sir uh, first of all thank you for uh, giving me the chance actually i want to ask a question uh, there is uh, many more stress when uh, the uh, students uh, get into iit then there is any process to overcome of this stress then any any kind of motivational program or so so that so that they can easy get into this iits or get rid out of this and there there is so much fear of iit and when they get in iit you said how they Uh, understand that the curriculum and all things they are very heavy right. and their mind are so much heavy so they can't get what they want to get right right it's a very important question like you know yeah. this is you know the first batch of student like first year student who join here it is a huge cultural shock for them right so many of them have i mean haven't stayed outside their home right or they stayed somewhere coaching and think they have not seen anything else the moment they come in the kind of freedom that they have here you know the institute boys can get into the girls hostel and vice versa this is something that they have not heard of right and the campus is lively 24 even in midnight you know these are the challenges i would request our dean student effort is the right person to tell these are real challenges and it is changing with time you know because you know, the challenges that we are facing now were not the challenges 10 years back i can tell you that Because the social like you know th therefore you know our response to addressing these challenges also have to be dynamic because we have to look at what is the challenge as of today right so i would request professor samir kandekar uh, okay. to sort of answer that yeah, yeah. Oh, you could come here yeah i think you can continue yeah